Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Welcome, everyone. Pennzoil at the Half. Greg Gumble, Clark Kellogg, Dean Smith at halftime. Indiana leading the Huskies of Connecticut 41 to 36. There were those who were lamenting the fact that UConn was in the same region with North Carolina. Maybe someone should have mentioned Indiana <laughs> first. Well, Indiana's done a nice job handling the ball. They haven't turned it over. As a result, they've gotten good quality shots and they've made most of them. Coach. And Indiana's gotten some great leadership, uh, you know, from Charlie Miller and Lewis, and then Patterson scored about 13 points. So Indiana looked good. All right, Coach. Meanwhile, at the Arco Arena in in Sacramento, California. This is second round action in the West. Arizona leading Illinois State 34-32. Early second half. Let's take you out there. I am Eagle and Jim Spinaco. A timeout has been called. 22nd timeout with 18-10 to play in the second half. 38-32. Arizona leads Illinois State. The 1-8 game here out west. Illinois State came out of the second half and aggressively took it to the rim. But Arizona has answered back with some scrappy play of its own. Scrappy play, some size off the offensive glass, and a very good timeout by Kevin Stallings down his end because Lute, Lute Harris and Olsen's team is really finding the range. Defensively, did you notice they stepped up a little bit, picking it up defensively? There's Miles Simon's dad, Walt on hand a rather large contingent of arizona fans making the trip to sacramento but as we've seen throughout these ncaa tournaments if the underdog can get some momentum that swing vote will favor the underdog and a five second call rico hill couldn't get it in well the decisions and the adjustments at the halftime lute Olson making a decision to say hey we got to up tempo this thing defensively let's make it happen let's get out there and Get this pace back up where we like it. Bibby. Mike Bibby with a jump shot. And just like that, it's a nine-point Arizona lead. They just keep coming defensively. What a great play by Simon. Bibby defended by Muller. Oh, deflected. And Illinois will get it back. The Redbirds of Illinois State. You see the deflection here. Watch Simon go after the basketball. It's one thing to track this down, but then to save it also. Two on one. Cart mill with kick. Watkins. Oh, that was a kick, wasn't it? It came off Bramlett's foot. No call. Bibby on a crossover. So quick. And he draws the foul on the baseline. Had Muller coming out. Adam standing up a little bit. Bibby so fast with the basketball. That crossover going. So the Arizona Wildcats on a 9-0 run right now and have grabbed a 41-32 lead on the Redbirds of Illinois State with plenty of time remaining in the second half. Earlier today at the Hartford Civic Center, North Carolina in overtime over U. In regulation, they did not. They go to overtime. In the overtime, North Carolina just owned it. Game tied at 81. Antoine Jamison, the rebound in the basket, putting them ahead for good. The Tar Heels over UNC Charlotte by a score of 93 to 83. Your thoughts on those Tar Heels today, Coach? Well, those 17 straight foul shots in the last few minutes of the game in overtime were outstanding. And that inadvertent whistle, I don't know. Mr. Harrington better tell us how he did that. He, he breathed a sigh of <laughs> but relief let me today. Say, yeah, we UNC had to revive him. We had to revive him. Come on, UNC Charlotte played great, too. They did, too. Well, how about it, Clark? Part of a champion display by Carolina. Shaman Williams and Vince Carter were outstanding late in that game. All right, we have uh, second half action coming up. Terrific game going on between UConn and Indiana, and we'll get you back there for the second half right after this. Pennzoil at the half has been sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop-and-go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Continues with CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA basketball championship. Second round action, including Oklahoma State versus this is the top seed of the South, Duke, Western Michigan, Stanford, Valparaiso, fresh off its upset win over Mississippi, taking on Florida State. Other action, and you'll have to check your local listings for the game in your area. Seven to 32. Arizona with the lead, knocked out of bounds by Bramlett with 22 remaining on the timer. Arizona 
Arizona coming out man to man again, staying with it the whole way. Watson's in some traffic. First good look they've had in a while. Leroy Watkins now has six. Terry back in the game along with Edgerson for Arizona. Simon lost the ball going behind the back and Gibbons feeds it for Hansel. They'll stay with the pace now. If they're going to slow and execute, they have to make sure they get good looks. A lot of different touches, but they don't want to force the action. When you're down 13, you have to get the good looks and be consistent with the basketball. Hansel, penetration. Leaner doesn't drop. Simon pushes it up the floor. Illinois State trying to get back. Wild shot by Simon. And the foul call. They take advantage of all the breakdowns. They're so fast pushing the ball up the floor. Watch him trying to get his left shoulder ahead. Once he gets the left shoulder ahead, that means he has the advantage. On the break, if you can get that shoulder in front, then you can dictate what you want to do on your move to the basket. Second foul called on Muller. Simon, 78% from the free throw line. Attended seven final fours as he was growing up. His dad, Walter, a huge sports fan, made sure that Miles was able to see a number of NCAA basketball tournaments. There's Walter. And what a dream come through for Simon, a star at last year's Final Four as the MVP on the national champions. There's nothing like the experience of a Final Four, whether you're a player, coach, fan. He's been there. Arizona overall has been there three times, 1988, 1994, and 1997. And they've got the best winning percentage in college basketball since 1987. Perennial winners every single season. Burton going over on the left foot, maybe the left ankle jammed on him. Yep, he's grabbing for it. Going to try to walk it off. This team already suffering numerous injuries, including their starting point guard, Jamar Smiley, lower back problem. Yeah, he just plants it wrong, because Bibby is away from him, so it was not on his foot. Bad stab to the floor. 12th turnover for Illinois State. 15-point lead. Oh, that's execution. Oh, Bibby to Edgerson. That is an execution that is just unstoppable when you run it that sharply. The hands by Simon to knock it away. See, Simon knows that if you're boxed in on the right baseline, that the best place to pass it is usually to the left baseline in the left corner. So what did Simon do? He cheats, he anticipates, and gets a hand on the basketball. Simon has 16 points on 6 of 13 from the field. Rico Hill. Oh, it's a dangerous pass. They're just too fast to float one cross court. It grazed off Terry out of bounds. 17 remaining on the shot clock. Dickerson returns. And Simon gets a breather. 51 to 34 Wildcats, the top seed in the West. Trying to go on to the Sweet 16. Shovel pass from Hill to Hansel. And Tim Higgins has the call as Hansel made his cut to the goal. And it's gotten much, much more difficult for Illinois State to find the seam, to find the cut. Even there, they had an opportunity to get through the lane, but defensively, they've been closing. Arizona has been closing very quickly. First foul on Dickerson. Trying to get it to Gibbons. Ball knocked away. In the Nichols State game, when Arizona really put the blitz on, they were deflecting a lot of passes at the defensive end, and they continue to do that. Because of their quickness and anticipation, they get their hand on the ball a lot. Cartmill the bounce. There it is. There's an example of it. Illinois State retains possession. And a rather long possession at that. But how hard are they working offensively to get a look? Rico Hill driving to the rim. 
Under 13 minutes to play, Arizona with a 51-34 lead on Illinois State. We're going to take you out to Washington, D.C. Remember, one number two seed, Cincinnati, has fallen today. Indiana leads another number two seed, UConn, 45-43. Sean McDonough, Bill Raftery at the MCI Center. Two, the winner of this game will meet Washington in the Sweet 16, and Bob Bender, the Huskies coach, is doing some scouting for the trip back to Seattle. That trip won't seem anywhere near as long as it is for the Huskies. Michigan State will be making the trip to Greensboro. Congratulations to the Spartans on their way to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 1990. And West Virginia upset Cincinnati early today to go to the Sweet 16 for the first time in 35 years. Nice double on the out of bounds. Nice move by Richard Hamilton to the basket in the game of time. Once again, 12 points for the sophomores in Hopesville, Pennsylvania. Good team scoring inbounds. UConn terrific. Jimenez in for Lewis, who has four fouls. Record tried to jam it into Gladness. Guyton had to run it down near midcourt. He traveled. No basket. You get the nervous puppies, right? He's at the open look. UConn has played much better defense. Andre Patterson has stepped up his game. Other than that, Bob Knight's had some problems on the offensive end. Five minutes into the second half, tied at 47. Elamine, the runner. Voskal attempt. Voskal couldn't control it. Guyton does. A little bit of a rush there. Well, I mean, he's got to relax, run the show. Wrecker, tough shot. Gladness's follow wouldn't go. Voskel hit the deck. And a foul on the rebounding action against Indiana. I believe it's on William Gladness. Well, you took advantage of the dance at halftime on that replay by Wrecker and Hamilton. They're continuing the little waltz through the three-second lane. Very physical. Is replaced by Lewis on the bench with four fouls. The foul on Gladness was his first. Four team fouls on Indiana here in the second half. 14 36 remaining. 47 all is the score. UConn has not led since it was 13 to 11. With the 11 45 mark of the first half. Quincy O'Hartnett off the bench again for Connecticut. Double stagger screen for Hamilton to get it in his hands. And he is fouled on a reach in by Luke Jimenez. Indiana foul. And that's three fouls on Jimenez. Team's fifth. Possession foul. Hamilton. That's the inbound pass from Moore. Mr. Short when Bosco rips it away. He's got to become physical. Show his presence there. Patterson taking over the one end. He's got to do it on this end. Bosco benefited from time spent at Pete Little's big man camp in Hawaii last summer. And Sean, he went there with a bad ankle. They didn't expect him to show up, but he did, and they, he wowed them. Two Hoosiers hit the deck. Miller and Jimenez along the baseline, and Indiana saved it. 11 turnovers committed by the Huskies. Jimenez with Miller, Guyton, Gladness, and Patterson for Indiana. Freeman with a nice job tonight, and everybody looking to sniff a little bit. Hamilton, that trip. Well, it should be Bosco looking to help. Guyton, the shot clock at three. Moore defends. Moore thought he had all ball. And David Libby did not agree. Pretty good defender, though, isn't he? Started Curtis Staples. Wheeler up at Rhode Island. Antoine Brockington, good player at Coppin State. Plays them all, contains them. Nice little defensive maneuver other than the reach in. Number 25, AJ Guyton at the Hoosier line. Calhoun says Shooting more two. good a defensive player as he's ever coached. A.J. Guyton made the first free throw to give him 10 points. And here comes Paolo Delamine back into the ball game for Ricky Moore. And that, that particular spot is such an advantage. 
to Jim Calhoun. Moore's comfortable running the team or playing off the basketball. El Amin the same. Two free throws by Guyton. There's his mother, Rhonda. AJ's a sophomore from Peoria, Illinois. He's at one three-pointer tonight. He had one in 33 straight games. And a dunk by Mosco. Shake to shake, but El Amin pushed everybody baseline. What a strong drive. 13 minutes remaining, Indiana and Connecticut tied at 49. Got to give Patterson touches now. That's about the spot it's tough to double. Now turn. They did double for a moment with Vosco. Patterson pass Eric. Miller saved it and came crashing into us. Fortunately, Charlie's okay. And he might be good around the house. He put everything back before he went out in the I game. What, he showed me... <laughs> Uh, oh. Sportsman-like, uh, gentlemanly nature here. He was crashed at the table. Most people will be worried about himself. We have a very small monitor that our statistician Dick Boxing uses to track official stats. And Charlie was foremost concerned that that did not fall on the floor as it was about to. He gonna, saved it. I'm if Charlie uh, introduce himself to my wife. <laughs> Tidy some things up. Here's a three from Hamilton. And it was all the double at the other end that started it. Not a good pass. Oh, look at this open floor pass. That was dangerous. First lead for Connecticut since the 11.45 mark of the first half. Gladness shut off by Bosco, and he stepped on the end line. And look at Jake, a little emoting, a little excitement. He that still got him involved in the game, but defensively, he's been looming a little bit, trying to help out on Patterson. And that key double ensuing turnover, big mistake by Indiana. Five straight points scored by Connecticut. These two teams have been tied on five occasions. Under 12 minutes remaining now. The winner to the Sweet 16, the pass to Fusa out of bounds by Andre Patterson. Another good one. This one between Connecticut and Indiana. A tradition unlike any Maybe. other. The master from yes, CBS. Sir. Just one Switch from cable to direct TV to get all the Broncos games from their new home in LA. Got direct TV for all the pay-per-view movies. Hasn't been to the video store since. Saw the digital picture and sound on direct TV while shopping for a home theater system. Signed up on the spot. There are over three million others for whom all it took was just one look. So, what are you looking at? Ben, Indiana's turned it over six times in the second half, Bill, as Connecticut has really picked up its defensive intensity, and that's what they've lived with throughout this season. And really, Indiana has to get it to Patterson and somehow find somebody to give it to, because UConn has doubled, shaded to him. All of a sudden, he's not getting the opportunities he had earlier in the game. Colin Elamine with the basketball. It's Ricky Moore, Jake Boskel, Richard Hamilton, and Kevin Freeman for Connecticut. 20 on the shot clock. Michael Lewis, Luke Recker, A.J. Guyton, Larry Richardson still in the ball game, and Andre Patterson for IU. Bad pass by Elamine. Recker picked it off. Uh, he played Hamilton great. Slid through the pick on the baseline. Got himself in position for the steal. Who was a tremendous scorer in high school? He's made the transition role player in college. And an offensive foul called against Indiana. The removing screen by Larry Richardson, his second. And the team's eighth, so it will be a one and one at the other end. And what a killer, too. An empty trip. They're trying to get their offense in sync. And a giveaway. Oh, that's a killer. Now those are the mistakes that upset him. Mm -hmm. and he's a pure, great analysis of the game. Go ahead. He made an interesting comment yesterday, I thought about that. He said, the players get tired of hearing me yell at them and complain. If, but I get tired of seeing the same mistakes made by the same people. So it's kind of a chicken and an egg thing, right. as he's concerned. Well, tonight, not too many mistakes. That was just an unfortunate situation as they try to get back in this thing. bench and there were some oohs and ahs as coach Knight took his seat. Gladness back
back in the ball game. Richardson on the bench with an earache at the moment. Alameen trying to take it away from Lewis. Oh my God! And Craig gets ball in Indiana. The Indiana bench can't believe it, but Michael Lewis, who was there, didn't really put up much of an argument. Looked like a pre-law course there. Khalid Alameen getting an A as he had a little dialogue. Once again, the ability to get his hands on the basketball. Under seven minutes left now. Connecticut leads by seven. Hamilton bouncing through the lane. Nice shot. He, he's got some variety. A little spice to his game. A little runner. He can jump stop, fill it up deep, and put it on the floor. Largest lead for the Huskies. Patterson calls timeout. Ball spiked to the court. The Connecticut players thought Patterson should have been called for a technical. Andre stuck in the lane, knew a three-second call was imminent, and called timeout. He was frustrated. Now, this is what's happened. They've been doubling out by the foul line. This is amazing. He starts to drag the bit, but that's a little bit of frustration vented. And actually, Boston knocked it out of his hands. The Connecticut players trying to convince the refs that he spiked it. The rest of the team has not made a field goal this half. Patterson, four out of five, and you made the observation at the time he went to the bench at a time when it seemed like he was their only offense in the game. Well, I, I think Bob's thinking preparing him down the stretch, too, to get him a couple of minutes. The big addition, I think, Jake Bosco has attacked in the double, something they were rather hesitant to do in the first half. They become real quick at it, closing it, and he can't get a passing lane. Freeman on the one side, Bosco looking to help. Lenz has got to dive for the team, get to give himself some room. And then they committed only three turnovers in the first half. They've turned it over eight times here in the second half, and there's still 6.15 to go. Guyton, the runner, soft touch by A.J. Guyton. Guyton. 13 for Guyton. Only four of them here in the second half. with 12 on the shot clock. Missed the three. Tipped back out by Bostel to two Patterson, and he was fouled on the way by. Alameen pulled his hands back, hoping it would not have been detected. Now called on the Huskies, number 42. College it was Alameen. detected, and it's college third. Tonight on CBS, beginning at 9 p.m. Eastern, it's the Magnificent Seven, followed by Walker, Texas Ranger. That's all coming up tonight. Indiana, pretty good deed that last trip. Hamilton settled for the deep one. I just think Gladys has to rebound. Nice back cut. Pass him well by Recker was at his feet. He was fouled as he put the shot up, and Jake Vostel was barking at David Libby, and the referee glared back at him. Tell him, don't do that again. Vostel called for his third. Sees seven foul. That's the seventh team foul against Connecticut, so that sends Indiana to the line the rest of the game. Tomorrow's tip time. The action begins in the south with the number one seed, Duke, taking on Oklahoma State at 12-10 Eastern time. Lexington, five points now for record. Then in Chicago, Western Michigan versus Stanford and Oklahoma City. Valpo against Florida State. St. Louis and Kentucky, Syracuse and New Mexico. All starting between 2.15 and 2.36 approximately. And Rector has to step his game, get to the foul line. Does a good job of that generally during the course of the season. Connecticut with the ball on a five-point lead. Alameen. Got the soft bounce and the jumper a little bit long. It hit the rim, went up and kissed off the backboard to borrow your favorite well, expression. There are some kisses that are fortuitous, and that one was. I thought he threw that a little bit, but that's how they opened the game. That same play, side pick and roll. Alameen has 17 points tonight. Dayton. Leaned into Hamilton. Tough shot. AJ Dayton. Got it to go. 15 for the sophomore from Peoria, who was the Big Ten freshman of the year last year. 33 in the lane. Clock under five minutes left. And ticking down toward four and a half minutes remaining. Connecticut up five. And the automatic switch out here. Hamilton, you gotta keep yourself active, standing around right now. 
Higher offense standing around for Utah. Shot clock goes under 10. Elamine, great pass. Freeman fouled with one second on the shot clock. Is he clever, Elamine? With that hedge on the pick and roll, but they started the game with a side pick and roll. Jimmy Calhoun's been riding this play. You mentioned standing still down, guiding at this end. The counter, terrific offensive maneuver, as you noted, Sean, but to lead so clever in understanding how to take his guy and where the spacing is. Can he dribble through, or does he have to pick it up? Freeman makes the first of two. Eight points for Freeman. Another of those players trying to balance the responsibilities of basketball academic and fatherhood. He has a one-year-old son, Jordan. And that's a Michael Jordan. Going to Kevin and his high school sweetheart. They never married and are not together now. He does participate actively in the raising of his son. Seven-point game. Wrecker, the runner, foul. Hamilton underneath, but Jake right there. You notice they're going to the dribble a little bit more. That's mm -hmm. something that Bob Knight changed a few years back. Good players, permission to take their guy, a little extra bounce, or keep it in their hand. Of course, one of the criticisms of Bob Knight over the years has been he hasn't adjusted to the times, and that is clearly not a lot of changes that you can see tonight in the way Indiana plays. Oh, I think they're up tempo. I also I mentioned the motion earlier. They ran a double screen. They did some isolations. A lot of things that uh, are innovative in a sense. Connecticut gets by six. Four minutes remaining. Luke Record makes the second free throw. Two free throws by Record. And Indiana back within five. Indiana led by five at halftime. Alameen dribbling away from defenders. The shot clock down to 11. Hamilton off for Elamine. He leans in. The shot wouldn't go. Elamine got a hand on the rebound but couldn't control it. Out of bounds. Last touch by Indiana Connecticut. Ball. It will be Indiana's ball. The Hoosiers down by five with 324 remaining. The five-point lead. The winner will meet Washington in the Sweet 16 Thursday night in Greensboro. The Huskies. 81-66 winner over Richmond in the first game of the day here. And, Sean, it looks like Indiana's going to the dribble, particularly Wrecker, and I think Connecticut's using the dribble too much. They're not running their screens and getting Hamilton free, giving them areas to work. Michael Lewis, Luke Wrecker, A.J. Guyton, William Gladys, and Andre Patterson for the Hoosiers. That is totally alone out there. Lewis, three minutes remaining in regulation time. Patterson short with the shot. Picked off the floor by Elamine. Smart. Bosco didn't get the bounce. Tipped and a great hustle to save it by Lewis, but right to Bosco. Then Freeman played it off to Elamine. Hamilton, a huge Indiana does a great job hustling. Unfortunately, if you're going to save it, you try and save it towards the sideline or towards your man, not back in play. But Jake able to find that thread, the needle, and the point guard distributes. Hamilton knocks it down. Minutes remaining, the CBS Sportsline stat of the game. Offensive rebound. The team for Washington earlier today in its win over Richmond and the edge 14 to 4 tonight for Connecticut. Get all your tournament team sortable stats, real-time scores, and much more at cbs.sportsline.com. They come right out with a little pressure. Of course, Indiana used floor and clock. And Jake shapes up with Patterson. There's two field goals in the last six and a half minutes for Indiana. The Hoosiers have scored 21 points in this half. Patterson 
drops into the bucket. They're back within six. Andre Patterson has 23. Let's see if they get back to some activity here, Sean Hamilton. Generally the guy that keeps the puppies moving. Freeman, tough shot. Bostel over the back. Couldn't snare the rebound. It wound up in the hands of Luke Ricker. Lewis poked away by Elamine, and Lewis got it back. Guyton steps in front of a pass that might have been intended for Jimenez, and then a blocking foul called on Moore, and that's the third on Ricky Moore. All about the dribble, huh? Guyton, Wrecker, occasionally Lewis, uh, Jake Bosco now all over Patterson. I think he should slide to the low box now. They don't have anybody jamming and helping out on him. 19 fouls now against Connecticut. Both teams with nine, so the next will tick the double bonus into effect. A.J. Guyton made the all-important front end of the one-and-one. One. 16 points for Guyton. And here comes Indiana. Back to it in four, and still a long way to go. A minute 37 left. made 16 of 18 free throws tonight. See if they get the late pick and roll. They get running clock again. The clock down to 10 to shoot. Moore into the corner. Hamilton. Wow. Unbelievable spacing all the way up the sideline. One minute remaining. Guyton one kicks it out. Lewis missed the three. Jimenez anticipated the spot of that rebound. Guyton drives past Moore. Missed the layup. Patterson a tip that wouldn't go. Freeman controlled. And, what a and they foul Elamine. And what a job by Bosco. Intimidating down there. Sean Hamilton told both of us his first college game. I had six points against Indiana. I felt so bad about the way I played. Well, 20, put it 23, as he spaces on the dribble drive and Moore, the other point mentality, distributes. Oh, is that some unerring shooting? Nothing but cotton. Some confusion now about whether or not there is going to be a timeout. Richard Hamilton's first career game last season was against Indiana in Indianapolis at the RCA Dome. He struggled. Connecticut lost by seven. He said it was on national TV. It was my first game. All I wanted to do was fit in. And I didn't play very well. And I've been looking forward to playing Indiana ever since. They played that game without any exhibition games. Usually teams in the preseason Get have an one. exhibition game. Connecticut went in virtually cold with a young team. But what they've done nicely, at least that particular trip, they used some clock, but they were running an offense which is very important. They didn't have to get back into something. They, Indiana just played pretty good defense. Then the break late as Moore was able to turn the corner and give it up. The reason for the delay is that Lewis has fouled out, so Bob Knight is using the time that he is allowed to have to make a substitution. Lewis is replaced by and now I want a timeout, he says, and it will be a full. Indiana. 46 and a half seconds left, and Indiana is now on the ropes. They did a nice job, I think, on Patterson in this second half. Wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. How they played him three-quarter or front and then get the help mostly from Jake off the ball with Freeman doing the teeing up. And Alameda has 19 points. They don't back off here. They're going to make it tough to come down. Miller, a good catch of the inbounding pass from Jimenez. Connecticut's pressuring to make Indiana run time off the clock. Freeman not letting Patterson get free, too. Tough shot. Becker takes a quick three. It almost oh. ran. Miller, the Charlie Miller. What a presentation that was. Good quickness to the 10. And as you might say, the ability to elevate <laughs> <laughs> with authority. And there's the little giveaway before the ball is inbounded. In no and time. 
Jimenez, his fourth. Wrecker took a very awkward looking shot. This almost went in and then Miller threw it in. Nice readjustment, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's tough. You're looking defensively, you can't really get a check out on him. Back to the line goes Elamine. Uh, really reminds you tomorrow's action starts at 12 10 Eastern time with Oklahoma State against Duke. Double bonus situation, so Elamine is shooting two. St. Louis, Kentucky, a feature game in the second group of games tomorrow. UCLA and Michigan for most of the country to take you right up to 60 minutes and close out a wonderful first weekend of 98 NCAA tournament. Absolutely sensational. Game after game, right to the wire. And Indiana get past the first round for the first time in four years, but they will not advance beyond the second round. Connecticut. 15 seconds away from a trip back to the Sweet 16. And a date with the other Huskies from Washington in Greensboro on Thursday night. Miller runs the foul. Elamine with five seconds left. Indiana's season will end at 21 and 12. Red at 20 and 12. And Connecticut with the win will be 31 and 4. They'll meet Washington on Thursday night in Greensboro. And North Junior Carolina and Michigan LME. State, the other team to advance to the Sweet 16. In the East, they came out of the Hartford Civic Center. That was a very attractive Thursday Parents, night doubleheader. I'll say. And I can't help but think the advantage that Jim Calhoun has is LME and Moore at the point distributing to a guy like Hamilton. Andre Patterson, his fourth straight 20-plus point game, but not enough in the last game of his career. Richard Hamilton, the huge threes down the stretch, our Chevrolet players of the game. Alamine's free throw miss. Charlie Miller at the buzzer will not go. And the final score is... Connecticut 78. Well, they both have a lot of nice things to say about one another. Jim Calhoun, the up-tempo. Defensive adjustment, second half. We're solid. Final score, Connecticut 78, Indiana 68. For Andrea Joyce and Bill Raftery, Sean McDonough saying so long from Washington, D.C. We'll rejoin Greg Gumbel after this. University of Connecticut has qualified for its first trip to the Sweet 16 since 1994 with a 10 point win over Indiana. Let's take you back out and join Andrea Joyce. Andrea. All right, Greg, thanks. Coach, it almost looks like you brought out two different teams, first half, second half. How pleased are you with the effort you got from your kids in the second half, especially on the defensive end? Well, you asked me at halftime what we need to do, and I said stop playing defense. I don't care about offense. We'll score points, but we need to stop playing defense, and obviously we did. But, you know, I, we coached against Bob Knight, a legend, and I know he's a uh, legend back there in Dean Smith, and uh, we took a book from their, their uh, page in their books. We played great defense in the second half. So now you face a Washington team that has to go all the way back to Seattle and come all the way back out east for the game against you. What do you think about that? Do you give, give you a little edge, maybe? Well, if they don't bring it two seven-footers, we will. You know, if they get stuck because they're too big to go on the airplane, they're big kids. We'll have to make some adjustments. But we're really happy to be at Sweet 16. It's a very young team, and I think the second half, Andrea, was probably as good a defense as you're going to play. All right, good luck next week. Thank thanks, you. Coach. Back to you, Greg. All right, Andrea, thanks very much. So Indiana falls by 10. Not a bad game by the Hoosiers, though, Coach. I really think uh, they played well, and that's hard to say when you lose. But they didn't get many easy baskets, and... That's something that Coach Knight, I'm sure, will work on over the year and get some players who can provide easy baskets. Clark. Defense was outstanding by UConn in the second half, and that's what allowed them to get into their type of game, and they were able to pull away. All right, this reminder for you coming up tonight here on CBS, it'll be Magnificent 7, followed by Walker, Texas Ranger. That's coming up tonight on CBS. We'll take a timeout, and we will come back with more for you here on CBS in just a moment.
Jim Durham with the call out in Boise today as West Virginia knocked off Cincinnati. Let's take a look at the brackets now through the first two sets of games in the East and in the West. First of all, in Boise, Idaho, West Virginia knocking off first Temple and then Cincinnati, and they will move on to meet Utah out in Anaheim. Utah showed they could handle a pressing team. When they beat Arkansas today, they'll have to do it again against West Virginia, who likes to press as well. All right, Clark, out of Sacramento and moving on to Anaheim next week as well are Arizona, which won their two games by 39 and 33 points, respectively, and they'll meet a Maryland team, which comes off a victory over Illinois. Coach? It's hard to say that Maryland will be a lot closer, but I think it will happen because even though Arizona guards are so very good, all right, Coach. In uh, Hartford, here's how it turns out. North Carolina in overtime over UNC Charlotte today, and they will move on to Greensboro, North Carolina to meet the Michigan State Spartans. You know, outstanding matchup here. Both of these teams have good size and balance. Should be a tough game. In Washington, D.C., here's how things shaped up. The Washington Huskies will move on to play the Yukon Huskies. Huskies meeting Huskies. Huskies are going to win this one out in Greensboro. <laughs> That's the way to say it, but uh, Yukon was impressive that second half. All right, Coach. That's how the bracket shape up now. A timeout here, and we will set the lineup for tomorrow when we come back in just a moment. To Jenkins, to Drew for the win! Good! Oh! He did it! Bryce Drew did it! Balfo has won the game! A miracle! That was Valparaiso's miracle finish, miracle, he said, finish <laughs> over Ole Miss yesterday, 70-69, to 69, and they take on 12th seed Florida State tomorrow here on CBS. Here's what's happening tomorrow in particular. We'll start with number eight seed Oklahoma State in the south, taking on top seed Duke, the Blue Devils, facing off at 12-10 Eastern time. Second leg of our triple header. Many of you will see number three Stanford against Western Michigan at 2:15. Valparaiso and Florida State in the south. St. Louis against number two Kentucky, number five Syracuse Me number four New Mexico 236 Eastern time tip there and our day will conclude with a bang three great second round matchups number 10 Detroit number two Purdue Rhode Island against top seed Kansas in the Midwest and then the South matchup of UCLA against third seed Michigan what do you see in there that you like Clark I've got that Stanford Western Michigan game right in the middle of my radar screen because it's a classic matchup of size with Stanford and tremendous speed of the Western Michigan Broncos and we know what an air traffic controller you are too. <laughs> if anybody knows about moving on to the Sweet 16. It's Dean Smith who's done it 15 times in the last 17 years. How does that feel? It feels great to get there and I know each of the teams that do make the final 16 will be on a two-game winning streak. <laughs> all right coach. For <laughs> Dean Smith, Clark Kellogg and for all of us here at CBS Sports, I'm Greg Gumbel. Thanks for joining us. We'll look for you at noon tomorrow here on CBS.